Hello everyone and welcome to episode 135 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. This is a crafty podcast where I feature crochet, knitting and sewing and any other crafting adventures I may get up to I'll share with you here too. Um, the show notes for this podcast will be on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll also pop a link for this episode's show notes in the down bar below that's where you'll find the project names yarn names etc useful information is all there um if you would like to uh skip around on the video the timestamps are also in there so i sort of section off each thing i talk about so you can reference things if you want to and if you would like to support the podcast that's also very much appreciated you can give me a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe do the old um heart thing what is it super thanks that's it that's what it's called all of that stuff is wonderful and appreciated um, you can also find my patterns on cherryheart.uk and i'm on instagram as sandra cherry hrt yes okay hurrah um how are you how have you all been it's been literally months and months since i last podcast so yeah obviously a lot's been going on i think in my last podcast i said um i think i said oh i'm heading into a busy patch so i don't know you know quite what i'll get done and then sort of immediately after i published that everything just went and went kind of crazy so i've just been like nothing wrong you know just running around like a lunatic just doing things basically um Oh, hello, we have a visitor. Good Lord, he just came in and sat down straight away. That's a minor miracle. Um, what was I saying? Yes, just um, that, yeah, things had kind of blown up and yeah, just got really busy. My daughter was doing her A-levels, so there was kind of study sessions at school and then running a back and forth for exams and, yeah, just sort of loads of appointments and things. And, yeah, I don't know, it just feels like my feet haven't touched the ground, really. And I went, I think I went away with my sister since I last podcast as well. We had a little sewing retreat, so I'll, um, yeah, I, so I'll talk about that a bit later. Um and we went on holiday to Italy that was really lovely as well and yeah there's just been so much going on I haven't had a sort of chance to really think about cherry heart related things for a while so that's where I've been everything's fine I'm okay um, and I hope you're all okay too and uh, yeah I've been doing some lovely things since we last spoke so I'll leap straight into my makes um, We'll start with this, this cardigan here. Um, I'm just wondering if it's looking a little blown out on camera. See, it's gone. Hmm, is that too dark? Who knows? Um, yeah, so this cardigan, which I have finished, I've got another video to show you properly, but I was just going to show you a few of the nice little close up details. And look at this, look at how the raglan seams go with all of these nice lines. Isn't it pretty? Yes, yeah, so this pattern is the Maybury Cardigan. It's by Little Tailoress um, and it's actually a test knit that I've done. So I don't think the pattern, at the moment the pattern isn't out yet as far as I know. Um, yeah, so I did it as a test knit. It was quite a long test knit because um it's made out of this gorgeous fisherman's rib that i was trying to show you a second ago um yeah it's just oh it's lovely um so it makes this really sort of um i was gonna say thick it's not that it's thick i mean it it's kind of got the ribbing so it does give it a thickness but it makes it so bouncy and squishy and it's got it's a mix of um yarn with mohair let me show you what I've oh I haven't got the yarn up here 
It's elderflower stitches. I'll pop a little picture in of the yarn that I used because I got it a little while ago. I got four skeins and I had some plan for it at the time. Oh, I think I was going to make a boxy with it. Um, but anyway, uh, I changed my mind and did this with it instead. But anyway, it was a very pale pink. I think it's called Point Shoes. It's a very, very subtle, beautiful shade. And I just mixed it with drops, oops, Kid Silk um, Merino. No, not Merino, Mohair, I mean. What is it, Silk Mohair? Yeah, 75% mohair, 25% silk. So just in this very sort of pale, whitey, creamy colour. So it just, um, you know, brought back that colour just a tiny bit more, making it a tiny bit more paler. But it, you know, with the fluffiness of the mohair and the squishiness of the fisherman's rib, it's just gorgeous. But yeah, just following the pattern, was really lovely it's i mean all amy's patterns are very well written i've used her patterns before they're all clearly explained beautifully laid out nicely presented lovely patterns but this one i enjoyed particularly because of the way um so doing the sort of increases for the the raglan sleeve and the neck and things just the way that amy had presented it and she kind of had this like check list to work down where it sort of showed where all the different increases were and you could see exactly which row you were on and where the next increase was coming it was just such a clever way of showing that information I mean she had it all written out in standard pattern style as well but she had this as an additional thing it's just a really really clever idea and it was really lovely to use and it just made that whole process easy and simple and just those sort of checking through those things just made it feel like you were making fantastic process progress. You just kept knocking another little bit off and another one off and another one off. And it it just made it feel like not a long process at all. It was just every time you could say, oh, I've got to here now and I've got to here. So it was really pleasurable. And she did um, a similar sort of thing with the, um, the other side, actually. That's my buttons. With the buttonholes um, to show where to put them in. You know, normally it would say put them on every in throw um, and Amy had that but she also had this sort of little uh, kind of checklist so you could work your way through it and it yeah it just made the whole thing go really smoothly and I just loved it I really loved working on it and all the little it's just it's so neat the way it's done these raglins are beautiful the way the start is done at the neck I can't even remember how I did it now because it was a couple of months ago but it's so neat it just leaves you with this perfect sort of seamless kind of design it's it's just really well done well done Amy because it's amazing I really love it the buttonholes are absolutely you know you can't even really see them there it is there but everything it's just a really neat and clever solution to all the sort of different elements so yeah I love it I absolutely love it I absolutely love the pattern she's got a, I'm sure it's going to be a massive hit but um, yeah if you've ever wanted to try fisherman's rib this would be a fantastic pattern to do it on I think because yeah I loved it I'm gonna gush I am gushing it's gush worthy there we go <laughs> that's all that I'll leave it there but yeah just really really enjoyed the whole thing um so that's my one thing that i've one garment that i've made and then the other thing that i've made which i'm also wearing i'll pop a bit of footage in so you can see the two of them together because i did a little loop-de-loop -loop for you So my skirt I made 
well I mostly made on my sewing retreat with my sister so we had been talking about this idea of just sort of going away for a bit right sorry about that the camera started flashing at me and I don't really know quite what's wrong with it but uh, let's see if we can continue so what was I talking about oh the sewing retreat idea yeah so me and my sister had this idea of wouldn't it be great if we just had a bit of time to do some sewing without interruption just all you know it's quite often you do a bit and then you have to clear things away for dinner or whatever it is or go and pick someone up or something we thought wouldn't it be nice to just have a bit of uninterrupted time where you could just lay things out and think about it and do a bit of sewing so we we wondered about the idea of like signing up to a class or something but in the end we just thought well let's just get like a little cottage an airbnb or something just for a couple of days and we'll just go and we'll do some sewing so that's what we did we found this lovely little place it was um in suffolk gorgeous little cottage it was really lovely um but we'd sort of you know we were checking on the pictures there was quite a nice big dining table and there was some floor space and some worktop space we thought okay i think we can make that work you know there's enough space to lay things out and we can take our sewing machines and set them up and we'll be fine so we did that and it was just really really lovely it was such a nice thing to do it was really relaxed the cottage was gorgeous yeah it was just really pleasurable and I made or started to make this skirt which was less pleasurable <laughs> it started out okay I was really uncertain about the sizes I'm, I'm I'm only just starting to make sewing patterns and I do don't really I'm not great at reading the information on the back I don't think it you know I don't when it gives you a size is that finished size or is that for my body size it doesn't always seem to say depending on what you get and then and how do those sizes come up you know do they come up small do they come up large you know if I shop at one shop I might be buying a completely different size to if I shop at another shop depending on what they do so how does that work with sewing patterns I don't know anyway so I did a sort of best guesstimation of what I thought my size was which was quite big on this sewing pattern but I thought well maybe it just comes up small I don't really know so I started making it everything was going well but when it came to the crutch of sort of getting the last elements together it was clear it was absolutely huge so I think there were elements I really struggled over it took me because we had kind of two full days it kind of took me one whole day to get this sort of tiny little panel with the pocket in so to do this sort of thing on top gather that in onto the pocket gather this pocket panel so at the end of the day I mean I had to trace out my pattern and cut it out and everything so so I'd got my pattern, I'd cut out my pieces and I'd done two little side panels the end of day one. But then end of, then day two it started to come together a bit better. But like I say, it was clear that it wasn't going to fit. So I thought, you know, it's those things, things that you learn just by doing and it's things like the weight of the fabric. So that sort of, it was quite a heavy fabric which I like how it lays for the skirt but there's more weight sort of pulling down plus how you know the waistband I kind of measured around my waist but I didn't really think about well actually it's got to fit and hold this fabric up so it needs to be not just loosely draped around my waist it needs to be fit around my waist so I perhaps didn't measure accurately either so it's things like that and sort of t knowing what you have to take into account of that you just kind of learn with experience so I thought oh, okay so I've got to reduce it down so I thought well I'll just put some more gathers in the back that's fine so I reduced my waistband down I re get you know unpicked everything regathered it re-sewed it all in did it and I thought well it's on and it fits but it's still too big my sister's like it's just too big it's just hanging too long it looks like it doesn't fit you and I was like maybe I can get away with it thinking I don't want to redo it and she was like well you know it's up to you it's wearable but I think really it, you know it needs to be a bit smaller I was like you're right I know you're right I'm just trying to put it off so I left it I was sort of fed up by them so I left it until I got home and you know I didn't have much longer anyway so it, I'd kind of run out of time so I left it for a while in a grump and then when I came home I finally sort of tackled it and so because I'd already gathered more fabric 
into the back I thought well I'll gather a little bit more into the front so that's fixed it it fits on my waist nicely it's a reasonable length but I think those sort of extra gathers in the front don't look quite right so that's the first thing I suppose I could have undone the seams and just taken a bit more fabric out would have been better but though I would have been literally undoing practically the entire skirt which didn't really appeal so I'm just chalking out to experience and um, so yeah so the front gathers are the most noticeable thing that kind of bug me a bit the back gathers I can't see so much so I don't worry about those but overall because I've got much more fabric because I was planning on a skirt this wide and it's ended up being this wide I've got much more overall fabric gathered in so it's a much more full look sort of the pattern oh you need to know what pattern it is I'll find that in a second the pattern sort of hangs you know it's got some gathers so it's got some fullness to it but mine has much more so it hangs at much more of an angle than the original so yeah it's not quite the look I was going for you know I liked the look of the pattern I chose so yeah but on the other hand I have got a skirt I am wearing it I could leave the house with it you know it's it's fine so I think it's overall successful but it was there's a huge learning curve there I guess is the point but that's okay that's that's kind of the point of starting to do things you don't you don't learn till you do do you so now I've done so here's the pattern it's a simplicity one there's the number there s9180 is it yeah I don't think they have any names or such but if you see what I mean that sort of there's some fullness there's some gather there but obviously it hangs a little off straight sort of almost a kind of a-line effect ish whereas mine is sort of it comes out a bit quite a bit more fuller but there you go but so yes but I would make it again now I know how I've done it all wrong now I know how to do it all right so I would make it again I do also really love this fabric I'll try and show you a bit more of a close-up of that it's this lovely gingham checked it's like a linen I can't remember if it was a linen blend because it's quite heavy relatively or it might be a linen cotton blend or something but yeah it's lovely and I love the pattern and I love the feel of it but um, I won't say it's the wrong material for the skirt I think it's absolutely fine material for the skirt it's just it's just my lack of knowledge for, for the best way of dealing with it really but yes but so I learned a lot about that I learned a lot about the fabric I learned more about the sizing and I also learned how to hem quite a full skirt because I was going to turn it up quite a chunk and have you know a bigger hem in case I needed to adjust it but apparently on a fuller skirt you can't do that you have to have a smaller hem oh look I didn't I haven't taken off my little marks while I was <laughs> marking it to turn up have to do that um yeah so I learned how to do that so that was good um yeah so all the rest of my projects are crochet ones so I'll talk about one that I think I had at least started before my hiatus and that is this rosy posy square that I was making and it was inspired by the uh, spring colours in my garden that's how long that was ago um, yeah so I'm using this sheep ears stone washed and I've got these four colours so this was the leaves of the tree and then this one bush had a kind of white blossom on it and one had this sort of pinky cherry blossom on so I just saw all those colours together in the window from you know my kitchen window and they just, just made me very happy every time I saw them so I thought oh I will use that for inspiration so basically I have been manufacturing quite a few squares now I've got them in piles because I've laid them out in a design and these are you know these are sets of rows here so I'm going to try not to mess them up too much but I've got quite a few of them here and I just need to join them together into a blanket so this pattern the rosy posy square is one that I came up with years ago 
and it's on my blog as a photo tutorial. Um, so it's there now if you want to have a go at making them. It's quite a simple, straightforward little pattern and I've got a step-by-step -step photo tutorial so that's all good. Um, and it makes quite a small size square as you see. And I think in the original I joined them together to make seat cushions. But this time I'm just going to do a blanket. I did think someone suggested a bag, which I really liked the idea of. Um, but in the end, I just, I just, it's just that simplicity. Because if it's a bag, I would have had to thought about the strap and the lining. And I did really like the idea, and I might even revive it. But just at this moment in time, I just thought I just want to join them and it be done. So I'm just going to make a blanket. Um, and that's just the way it is. What was I going to say? Oh yes, but I'm going to make, I like this one, I like where the colours fade out. I've got the dark to the light to the green and I've got one that's the greens here and it goes the other way with the pink, darker pink in the centre. I like those ones. Um, yeah, I've got, I'm doing a video tutorial for it, that's the point. So I've got a photo tutorial there now but I have made a video tutorial and I just need to get it um, uploaded and published. So that will also be coming soon. So if you prefer videos, that will be coming soon for you. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to make this into a very simple, quite small blanket. So what I did for the squares is I've got these four colours, there's four rounds, and I literally... Um, I've got a little thing, a little table, just show me every conceivable colour variation. So without repeating the colours, every different colour variation. And I've just made two of every single colour variation that there's available. Um, and I can't tell you how many squares that's made. No, eight by six it was. What's that? That's 48. So that's 48 squares. There's 24 possible combinations and I made two of each um, and I'm just going to join those and make that into a blanket I guess a baby blanket it has no purpose there's no baby to give it to um, there's no baby on the way so it will just sit and maybe a baby will come and I can give it to that baby or <laughs> I don't know at the moment I'm finding I suppose, I don't know, it's that thing of mojo, isn't it? My main thing was always being a product maker, so I make things because I want the final product. And sometimes that works, like with this. I really loved how it looked, I wanted the final product, great. But I've made a lot of things in over the years now, and, you know, there's only so many blankets and cardigans and things that you need and some that you want as well, and so then you make a few more, but then you make all the ones you want, and you make all the ones you need, and you still want to make things, and here we are. <laughs> so at the minute, I'm kind of just making things to be making things, because, you know, I don't need to tell you guys, you will all know, it just makes us happy, doesn't it? It just... It's a nice thing to do to relax. It's a it's a calming thing. Yeah, I just kind of need it at the minute with everything else that's going on and being so busy. That sort of little oasis of calmness, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of been more important rather than less as I've been busier. So, yeah, so just simple things where I can just sit and manufacture, you know, a whole load of circles in this colour. And, you know, and then I do a whole load of the next round in the various colours. That's been just that sort of balm that I've needed. So, yes, so I'm just making it for that purpose, really, rather than needing the end product at all. So, and I've got a few more things I'm going to talk about here that are in the same category. <laughs> So I don't really know what I'm going to do with them all. I was literally wondering about selling them or, you know, doing some sort of charity thing or something because I can't keep them all. 
but yeah anyway that's for another ish uh, another day but yeah so i'm making progress with that i've kind of been holding back on this so i could show you where i've got to so far um and now i will join them i've got my layout sorted so i've got my configuration sorted i've just got to work out how i'm going to join them and then what i'm doing with the border and i've got kind of got an idea for the border as well so i'm all right with that it's probably going to be quite thin i think anyway yeah so i've got my idea for that so i will probably crack on with that a bit more now and then i've got oh this little chap let me tell you about this little chap or chapess i don't know so i think i spoke about this before i don't think i'd started but i think i showed you it in the incoming goodies section actually that my lovely friend sam who many of you might know as Betsy Makes from the Betsy Makes podcast that she used to do, that she doesn't anymore, unfortunately. But um, yeah, she brought me this and some of the um, little cotton balls to make these fairies, which is the Rick, Rick Rumi, is it? No, Rico, Rico Rumi. So it's Rico Designs and they make these little, how big are the balls? That's what I'm just looking at. Yeah, 25 gram balls. Um, of cotton which is perfect for anogurumi and see if there's a picture in here oh here we are, here we are. You can't really tell size from that but they're just these little like that kind of size little balls i didn't bring any up that's why i'm describing them um yeah and there's all of these sort of 12 fairies that you can make so i have made this little there we go this one here which is the holly fairy which they've put in for january but i want it to go on my handmade christmas tree so if you've been here before i've been talking about this a lot and what i want is a christmas tree where all of the decorations on it are handmade apart from the lights i guess i'm not making my own fairy lights but um <laughs> yeah so apart from the tree and the lights everything else will be handmade on it that's the idea so here is my little flower fairy that I have finished. I showed it sort of dismembered parts on Instagram the other day. <laughs> uh, so I got everything ready and then it was now I have to assemble. So yeah, um, so most of this, actually most of this is a different yarn. So this is Rika Rumi and the red was a Rika Rumi. But actually, oh, and this, this sort of, I don't know what colour this is, creamy, whitey, off-white, beigey colour, is Rikarumi as well. But this green and this sort of orangey, salmon, really dark salmon colour, corally colour, is Cascade Pima Cotton, is it? Pima Cotton? P-I-M-A. Pima. Pima. I don't know how you say it. Um, just because I had a whole bunch of it in stash and I just had the perfect colours so I had that kind of green and they and they they had a so they got the bright red belt and they had a slightly different colour for the legs so yeah so I thought well that will work out perfect this little bobble on his bobble hat and then I just had a little bit of leftover mohair that I used for the hair apparently you can get a rikurumi mohair as well a little ball of that but I thought I know I've got some of that colour left over and I think that'll do just the job so yeah I think I've forgotten to put his nose on I think he's supposed to have a nose I keep saying he because I feel like he looks like a he I think they've put a little bit of yeah look can you see it's supposed to have a little same sort of same colour flesh coloured nose so yeah not sure i've got the face quite as cute but it's it's not bad the mouth's not quite so good it's a little bit straight it needs to be a little bit more smiley but i didn't really have much in the way of black to do the features with so i had to, i had a bit of black acrylic and i literally sp like split the strands apart to get a thinner bit so that's what i used it's okay it's not too bad faces are always the hardest but yeah I think so that's to go on top of the tree is the point that's going to be like my Christmas fairy 
So there was a Christmas fairy as well. On for December, they've got an actual fairy on top of the tree that they show there. So I like that as well, but I just really like this guy. So I've gone with that. I did intend to make the fairy as well, so I could have them both out at Christmas. But I'll be honest, I made one and thought, I need to leave that for a while. These legs and these little feet are fiddly as heck. <laughs> it's really cool the way they do it. So the little, you get a little turned foot. Looks good, but all these tiny little bits and sort of that. Because it's amigurumi, you use a small hook, don't you? Like a way smaller hook than's recommended for the yarn to get that sort of tightness. So the effect is good, but not so good on my hands, which did not, which did not want to do too much of it. So I kind of just I thought I'll stop with this guy and then I'll come back and maybe do the other one later. I also think he's. This leg is thinner. Does that show up on camera? I don't know if I stuffed this leg a bit more or whether I did something wrong and missed a stitch out somewhere or miscounted my stitches somewhere, but this leg's thinner than that leg. But never mind. So yeah, that's gonna go on my tree. So that's my I haven't I haven't been keeping up with my idea was to have one project per month for my handmade Christmas tree, so I haven't been keeping up with that. I've only made one thing in the last, what, three months? But never mind. Doesn't really matter, does it? So there's that little guy. And then I've got another blanket project that I don't need, as previously discussed. Um, but it's going to be one of those sort of have it on the back burner, work on it in between other things, and hopefully at some point it will come together, projects. So I have been making, let's show you the whole, the whole shebang. These are all the ones I have so far. Well, no, that's, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna show you one. So I've been making these. Everything I touch is covered in either mohair or some other hair. So these tiny little hexagon flowers, but crochet hexagon flowers. So I want them to look like, um, quilting you know English paper piecing quilted hexagon flowers but I'm making them in crochet instead and I've been getting so I've collected together a whole basket of little bits of leftovers Oops. so this is four ply um, yarn so either leftovers or minis little scraps from things or that this one is a little swap from Lovely Alley, from Little Drops of Wonderful. Um, yeah, so I've got all sort of little sort of bits because you only need the tiniest amount to make these hexagons. So I'm doing three of one colour, three of another sort of close colour, and then I've got these grey ones in between as a sort of neutral middle one. So here's my pile that I've got so far. In rainbow order, ofs. Um, yeah, so I've tried to be sort of more or less even with, I've got some sort of acro ones, some darker green, lighter green, yellow, orange, sort of more soft, warmer pink, a cooler pink, a purple and some blue. So I've tried to sort of make roughly even amount of each colour. And then I think I'm going to do, um, some white hexagons in between I'm gonna hold some up try and show you so like imagine a round of white hexagons around there and then this one will join next to those so there'll all be little flowers in a with a white background is the idea so it's gonna take you know these are tiny you can see next to my hand how small these are they're only two rounds I'm using I think I'm using a ridiculously small hook as well yeah, 2.5 hook I'm using. So it probably take me, you know, three lifetimes to complete it, but there we are. Got to have goals, haven't you? <laughs> but I just thought, you know, you get all of these tiny little amounts, but they're such lovely colours and I don't want to just chuck them all away because I've got loads of them. I mean, I've got bigger amounts of some of them. 
that one's a whole 20 gram mini for example I think I think it's just under a gram per hexagon I think from memory so you know you only need like less than three grams of each color and then I'm just I've got various different bits of grey that I'm just going to use up so I sort of I make a whole bunch of the little grey middles and then I sort of work on which colours I'm going to put together on it so I had a little bit of this which is um, slightly more shiny yarn and I've got oh can't get it out the scissors stuck in it this one which is a, possibly a bit paler but just any leftover bits of grey that I thought were suitable I've put in I had some left over for my crochet star blanket if you happen to remember that because I used grey in that um yeah but you know we don't we don't like wasting yarn do we so but this will be a good way to use little bits and bobs and I'll just add to this pile and just keep going and going until at some point hopefully I get a vaguely reasonable size bit of blanket um, but yeah now I've got sort of quite a nice pile of each colour I might see about sort of joining some of those with the white just to see how that looks so that's the next stage I do need some more white yarn though because I don't think I've got hardly any left certainly not much of anything so and I'm gonna need a load of it yeah so that's a sort of one of those slow burning having the background projects and the last thing to talk about is actually a pip um, a pattern in progress so I saw let me find it I saw a picture here we go and this is from Country Living magazine I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that um, of this lovely white light cotton blanket um, I don't know if I've got I think I've got a better picture somewhere but I think it's on my computer I just quickly put that one on there so I could see enough of the square so what I'm doing is because it was just a picture of a room it wasn't a picture for the crochet pattern because obviously country living is just house magazine this was just one of the things that happened to be in the house or some sort of styling object but I really liked that it's clearly a crochet blanket so I thought Ooh, I wonder if I could recreate it so I've had this and I've been zooming away to try and work out <laughs> what the pattern is and I think I've got it I've tried to reverse engineer it so this is what I think it is so I think that's the center and then these sort of when they join together with another one kind of make another little flower there on each of the sides so I think that's how it's working what do you think do you think I've cracked it let's show you them there's that and there's that so I think that's it so I quite like that that's using this drops baby merino that that's my last ball of that left um which is a sport weight yarn so I tried I tried it like that but it's just can you see how it's it kind of the corners are going out more so to make this kind of uh, grid look in the corner I reckon they have to have a bigger corner space than I would normally use because otherwise it doesn't you know the pattern doesn't work out right but that means that the corners want to go out a bit more than the edges so you sort of get a, mm -hmm. that kind of effect if you're not careful so when I join them it will pull out a bit which is how it looks in the pattern to be fair but I just thought that looked a little bit tight so I tried it on a bigger hook to see if that helped I which it sort of does but it sort of also exacerbates the problem I don't know but that looks more the sort of looseness I want this looks a little bit tight to me this looks a little bit more the kind of Feel we want to be aiming for but then I also tried it in style crafts uh, bamboo cotton the naturals bamboo cotton and not only do you get this beautiful white white then because I think that is the white in the drops baby merino which is still quite 
creamy but you get this pure beautiful brilliant white which I want and just the feel and the drape of it and how it's working up is just perfect it sort of seems like it's gonna keep that nice squareness better and it's just it looks more the size that I wanted for the square as well I think I think they look in the, a bit bigger proportionally in that picture so I, I just worked it up in this and I thought yes that's it that's exactly the right look it looks correct so that's what I want to go for um, I've only got a tiny bit of that left though so need to get some more of that um, but yeah so I've I've made my pattern notes but I'm hoping to sort of do a pattern for it basically so I've got the square sorted but then I've just got to work out the border really and then there's those gorgeous tassels down the bottom as well look lovely oh I love it mm. but it looks quite simple it looks like just the squares are joined then it's got maybe three rounds of border there looks relatively simple and then you've just got your tassels on so yeah I'm very very um, excited to be doing more on that so I need to get some need to get some yarn I'm hoping to actually find a use for this blanket because <sighs> I really like the, I really want the thing so yeah I'm hoping I'll find somewhere where I can display it once I've done it but uh, yeah I'll have to think about that a little bit I think because my crochet star blanket is still taking pride of place in my bedroom so yeah it will need and maybe I could alternate the star one could be for like because it's a bit thicker that could be kind of autumn winter and then this that could be the summer one yes there we go sorted right so I do actually have some other things on the go but I'm going to leave it there so that this doesn't get too monstrously long and also the battery is saying it's just gone uh. guys, thank you so much for being here thank you for watching um, and sticking around on my channel even though I've been absent for so long um, it may also be another little while until I get back because certainly there's still quite a lot going on um, until at least autumn so we'll see we'll see how it goes I'll hopefully not leave it so long next time but um, I shall uh, hope that you keep well and have some lovely calm and quiet crafty moments until I see you again. Bye!